Oh, there it is. Well, I normally start bass fishing around about March when the peeler crabs start to molt. Sort of signals the start of the season, really. The sea pinks are in full bloom. Water temperature starts warming up and we we're on the bass however it wasn't a normal year as we all know and we were in lockdown in March so really the bass fishing didn't get started until well into June normally this time of year I'm looking in the rock pools maybe putting a big bait out for the bass at that start of the season run or dropping a peel of crab short but of course they could have well been feeding all the way through uh, I wasn't really to know and this is where I start looking for the prawns, for fishing those live prawns underneath the float and also doing a little bit of free lining of the prawns as well. I've got a saltwater aquarium set up, keeps these prawns nice and fresh and then you've obviously got a ready bait for the bass. Always got a lot of confidence in the prawns early season. As I say we've missed out on the peter crab uh, early run really, although it'd still be a good bait in June. first fish of the year was actually on these little shads these are the, the drift shads that we've been using we got sent some and fishing is quite deep early on in the year never do quite so well with the surface lures just dropping these off a little ledge here actually use that with some sabikis as well but there we go we are underway first back while during June just keeping an eye on what's under the water as well we're getting lots of these prawns uh, which is always a good sign so these are the shads we've been using had quite a bit of success with these actually bit of luck I had this one uh, this was our next fish Certainly had a good session on this one uh, between me and a friend who was just fishing to the side of me had 30 fish uh, to about 50 centimeters <laughs> but I only had six of those fish <laughs> um, my method was slightly different LRF fishing doing very well that particular day nice to be getting into the bass in June that one came up over 44 centimetres I think had a few of them that day and these ones are going back I've only kept three fish this year uh, catch and release is becoming more popular with bass particularly the big females uh, that we'll see later on and they kept coming this day in amongst the dodgy camera work there um, we had them on prawns and lures mixture of both really as to what took the most fish pretty much 50 50 you can see a video we did of it here on the top right of the screen i'll keep popping those up on the top right and then that will link to the video of these highlights as i say everything under 42 centimeters must uh, go back unharmed but there's a lot of anglers now returning almost everything back to fight another day Did try a little bit of um, fly fishing as well this time of year. I actually had one in June, another little schoolie on the Flexo Sand Crab. Uh, something I'll look at for next year more really. Never quite got into it this year. And then the next one, I think it was a few days later, was this tiny little fella. And that also went to the live prawns as well. Nice and close, I actually dropped a bait. I just dropped it into a little hole at the end of the rod tip. Well, this is June and just check out that water clarity. Really clear there, although the camera's misting up a bit at times. 
We suffer quite a bit on the south coast with uh, gully water or may rot it's sometimes called. That's the detritus uh, in the sea that really sort of rules out any decent lure fishing or even fishing with these prawns. So, And you get conditions like this when you have a succession of northerlies so pushing off the land uh, with tides perhaps dropping away and you get really good clear conditions. The fish, so we had a couple of small ones as you can see there. Managed to, uh, managed to land a few as well uh, over that 45 centimetre sort of size. You can sometimes see the takes, sometimes see the fish under the water. I've always vowed on the channel to try and get a bass take a top water lure in slow motion. So that's my little aim for 2021. Later on in June, we took a little pilgrimage to Beachy Head, uh, fishing off the ledge there, and managed a couple of small ones as well on that day. Again, that was on the float fishing prawn as well. Uh, nice to go to a familiar venue. This sort of venue here actually fishes quite well from March. It's quite a good early venue for the peeler crab. Never quite as good as it used to be, but um, certainly get them on the lures here as well. So we had a little bit of a problem actually during June, spider crabs. Spider crabs were everywhere, they were ruining the pots for the commercial guys and <laughs> bait robbing. I was pulling them on when I had uh, lugworm on, fishing for other species. And these spider crabs were absolutely everywhere. I even took a little shore dive and they were five, six deep in places. Now they usually move offshore in July, but they sort of carried on right the way through and it was my biggest excuse for not catching bass were on those so although it was tempting uh, I only did a couple of casts out with the soft spider crab bait because really I just wanted to get into the lure fishing I even had a spider crab on a lure at some point <laughs> can you believe it uh, so the later part of June we will come on to some more catches in a minute now into July things really were hotting up quite a warm July so it wasn't until the beginning of July, I managed another little trip once the water cleared up. Starting to see some mackerel, sand eel baits, bait fish inside as well, so it's all good signs for the bass. And on this day, uh, could be in for something a little bit better. Managed a few on the lures. I'm going to go through a few of the lures that did well for us this year uh, towards the end of the video. And mostly these are falling to komomos. So there we go, this one came up, I think it was six and a half in the end. Um, there it sort is. Of half weighed it before returning it, unfortunately. And again I missed the fight a bit. But this was the best fish of the but this was the best fish of the year up until that point. Six six and a half pounder. Really pleased with this one. Really pleased with that. So that's the biggest one this year. Just over six pounds. It was good to land a first decent sized fish. Previous biggest to that this year has been four pounds, so with that one yeah, a few days later um, I found a new mark actually a real shallow water one where the fish feed on the top of the reef and they sort of rush to be the first fish on there and my old Komomo was doing the business we had four from this particular venue and they were really hitting the lure hard as well so um, great sign in the shallow water and also if you look at the water conditions here one thing I did learn I've always assumed that you need it crystal clear and nice and clear at least for the bass but these conditions here a little bit milky uh, it does go to show I mean there's better anglers than me that I fish with for the bass and, and they're always saying uh, don't give up just because the water's a little bit cloudy and I think I'm learning that the uh, hard way this year um, but yeah that's great it's been really good for me that Komomo actually and what I tend to do I go back to the same mark the following day if I've done well um, and I don't have to go to work or have other responsibilities I'll go back to the same mark the next day um, you're learning more about the mark and you're seeing if it's if it's a one-off or if the fish are really inside and 
did the same sort of thing here went back the next day same lures exactly the same type of tide and did very well and then at the end of July managed this little one on the J13 that old Rapala <laughs> always get a few every year on the J13 and then we were into August didn't do too much passing in August actually started off with some small fish <laughs> um, do these really count? I'm not sure. Some of these were about the size of a bar of soap. Uh, but it was still a bass, I suppose. So I'll stick it on here. I have missed some footage, actually, from August, unfortunately. And then during August, we went down to Seaton in Devon. Uh, did a video of that. You can see that up there as well. However, on the bass, it wasn't... <laughs> Uh, it wasn't fantastic again we just had a, a couple of small ones here what was interesting though uh, was that although i was fishing over a reef these little bass were just being caught at my feet where the waves were breaking uh, so they're obviously dashing up the shingle uh, for something there so that was quite interesting and again learned something else there i've been casting over them for half an hour before i realized where they were And then we're into September, where the bigger bass uh, tend to be caught, fattening up for the winter and moving offshore. So you get to see the bass smash the lure, and then you're in. Uh, did miss a few fish but this is a new mark and i was just sort of learning how to fish it really and there's a reef that runs out uh, in the middle of these reefs we had five or six over a couple of days and actually one of my highlights because obviously you're seeing the bass uh, hit the surface lure Now this is the sort of thing I find interesting. <laughs> um, I might be on my own here, but I love watching back at some of the footage and seeing things I missed the first time. And this is a really good example on this next fish. Now I don't know if you noticed, but on the bottom right hand corner, that is a bass hitting a mackerel to stun it. And we'll concentrate on that in a minute but if you look in the background there you can actually see mackerel chasing the sand eels and in amongst those mackerel are the bass chasing the mackerel the clues are those gulls are a little bit higher for the mackerel uh, just chasing white bait they tend to be on the surface picking up the dead white bait but when there's bass around they tend to be a bit higher you can see here with the arrows those are what i think are bass chasing mackerel <laughs> or chasing white bait uh, i've looked over this footage loads slowed it right down put it up on the big screen and you can pick out individual bass actually i'm not sure we'll see that on youtube um, but yeah obviously a lot going on this day and then in the bottom right hand corner then this is where the fish hit what they do is they stun the mackerel and then obviously here i'm turning it back in with the line if you look it's obviously what a meter out so it's using that surf to, to sort of trap the mackerel amazing fishing and you do get a few days of those over the years and i try and enjoy them as best as i can and there is our nine pound bass which so Beautiful. far, so far this year is the biggest. Size of that. Let's hope for a double. <laughs> uh, with that, we were into October, 
and it was back on the live bait. And we managed this four pounder issue. This is the result off the beach. lures and which did best. Um, the Komomo accounted for a lot of fish, subsurface lure. Um, the spitting wire, this is the spitting wire, uh, was the most fun because we had them take that one off the surface, that was good. It's my old Komomo. Um, we always make improvements during the year. I think I'll go fully circle hooks for next year once I eventually get round to it. Does the fish less damage. Probably the best lure was this little Yozuri minnow. Doesn't look like much, and you can't get them anymore, unfortunately. But that accounted for some bigger fish. We had a six pounder on that back in July. Let's uh, try and find some more of those. And that brings us into November. And yesterday, where we went to Dungeness, no bass caught, but this happened. So we just lost that bass. I didn't record what I said, but <laughs> it was only a small one, just like that. But I just really wanted it on the camera to show you, really. But there's still some good fishing to be had, albeit during a lockdown. And I hope to get that double in November. The water's clearing up as well. It's even a chance of doing a bit more lure fishing before 2020's out. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, let us know if you're out and fishing and what your plans are for the rest of the year. It's black out there, but we've got the spitting wire on. I'm trying to keep as low as possible, I'm trying to keep this light. We've got a tiny little